Good morning, everyone. Today it begins day 14 of the every not every bit counts challenge, but the three rivers challenge for the pantry. So I have my granddaughter on the phone. <laughs> hey. We were making jewelry, but I decided we we need to get in here and make some breakfast for the family. So there they are cooking. And each time, like when you go to mix it, you're gonna want to pick up from the bottom because it'll fall to the bottom. It it'll uh, so you kind of mix it every time. But I put the recipe on the back of the jar, so and I will write that tip for you at the bottom. And here are some of the pancakes. <laughs> And my little helper is still on the phone. <laughs> we have all our own maple syrup. I, this last past year, I got five gallons. Hi. <laughs> all right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and light the uh, Pioneer mirror. I've got a little bit of paper and some kindling in. Let it get started and then I'll put a couple of pieces of wood on. All right, so this is what I got out. Um, I got one of the pork bellies that we have in there. We have a couple of these, but I'm gonna go ahead and start off making um, some of the bacon and which I needed to do for a while. And then I have some of this Angus chunk, chuck, I can't even talk, um, chuck. And then I'm gonna be making the poor man's casserole tonight. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. So first you want to um, fry up your hamburger meat and usually use one to two pounds. Not, it's not too much because uh, when, when I used to make this, as I was like 18, 19 years old and it was, we had, it was our meal that we had like two and three times a week. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. And we would carry uh, the same meal like to big events. I'd make whole big pans of it and carry it to events and it was like a very popular thing so um you just get your hamburger done you don't even have to cook it with hamburger uh onions or any garlic at that time um cook your noodles and usually it's just one box of noodles or if you have it in a container like i have but these are on the shelf so i'm trying to use everything up in the pantry uh you would go ahead and cook your noodles lay your noodles down in your casserole dish Put your tomato um, soup down. You don't even have to cook this first or anything. And then normally it would have been cheese whiz then. We would have bought like a, it was probably a dollar, like a dollar 59 or something then. And I don't even remember, but uh, my friend of ours gave us a bunch of these that we stay with on the weekends during the market. So I'm gonna use that. And you use a little bit of peppers and onions and it's delicious. I got Colby in here to do the cheese because he usually makes the uses that cheese for making um, cheese, dip. cheese dip. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but our um, friends gave us that cheese, and it was like I don't know. I got like six containers of it, so we might as well use it because uh, we have used it several of them already. All right, so first of all, what you wanna do is as you see, I've got everything here laid out. And my family, like my daughters, they still make this recipe too. But all you do is I've already greased this pan with a little bit of oil. And I, for some reason, I can't say oil right either. <laughs> on the videos, am I right? Oh, so please tell me how to say it okay and then you want to put down the tomato soup and just kind of roughly put it down I used to make it in like a small little casserole like a round one with that came with a lid and but I wanted to make sure if anything left to that, that my family had this recipe for their future and I knew it was going to need more than two cans, but I only remember using two cans. They uh, must have been a little thicker then. And then you want to go ahead and put your meat on. And it's just kind of like a layering process for it. 
What's wrong, Colby? Mm -hmm. And but this is some good stuff, I'm telling you. And then we always put, uh, this was the last of the fresh peppers that I had, but I did soak some. We always put uh, the fresh peppers and onions on top. And this is what really made it good too, because when you, um, if you like the texture, because of you'd have this fresh that you were biting into, and it, you know, it wasn't, it was soft, but not so bad. So you want to have your oven going now too, about 350, 375, whichever is best for you. And then we got the cheese all ready to go. And this is the part that's kind of hard, especially, um, it's already gotten a little thicker. And I added, <laughs> she's a cheese baby. See, I'm a cheese head. Yes, I am. And you just want to have all of it layered out as best you can. Okay, Rosie. Rosie always wants to say, Mama, I know I want some of that. And I just put a little bit of milk. I don't know if I said it, but put a little bit of milk into the pan when you're cooking with that cheese. And then this will all get uh, melted together. And like I said, I used to go to big events, um, big Girl Scout events, big, um, you know, dinner parties, church events, everything. And I always took this and everybody always loved it. It's a simple, easy recipe. And really you didn't use any spices. And, but if you want to, you can use, you know, salt, pepper, garlic powder. And those were some of the things I might have, you know, thrown in at the time. But it's just so good the way it is that you don't really need anything. And now we're going to start the whole thing all over again. And some tomato soup. So that's still only two cans. But you can put more depending on how much. Um liquid you want in it and some meat and it's gonna go in our pioneer princess tonight that you saw me get started and it's finally rolling because it, it uh, took a while to um, get going it's six degrees outside right now so it's a good time for it and I, I can't wait to hear what everybody else is doing for the pantry challenge and some of their um, things they're finding in their pantry to use up because I, I have like maybe two three more cans of the tomato soup that um, from the store and actually I think my neighbor Linda um, gave me those and at back in Gates County <laughs> so that's using up stuff in your pantry am I right so it's doing really good I'm go ahead and just use everything I got here and put some more noodles down I mean noodles cheese down on the top and that is it and I will meet you over there at the Pioneer Princess I did have to reheat the cheese up and the on top I added the um, the boys <laughs> I added the uh, green peppers that are freeze-dried and the oven is up to about 325 so that would be a good time to go ahead and put it in and I think I would like to actually have it I'm gonna move the shelf up there for tomorrow or the next day, whatever. So I am gonna have some of the salmon um, that I got from Azure last year. And those are, those are like the last two pieces of salmon we have, but those are the pesto that I did last year with the garlic and the pine nuts. All right, so we have 
to see how it's going. All right, so I gotta shut this up. All right, let's go into the other room. like a big bite. Mm, that was a good bite. Mm. Hey, Cooper said he was going to eat a gallon of it. I'm going to eat two gallons. This is good. Mm. Well, that went quick. Okay, so now I'm going to do the pork belly. And so normally I just take and slice it right on through into thirds. And then I take and put it in um, two Ziploc um, baggies like uh, freezer baggies because you're going to want something thick but I what I do first is I take and mix it in with some brown sugar and salt like um, a quarter cup of each and I just mix it in no no exact measurement really and I just put it in the bag and I flip it every day for six days and after the sixth day we put it on the smoker and that is it all right so I just mix in a little bit of the brown sugar and um, I guess I should have got a cup for the salt but a little bit here and that pack it wasn't packed so that that'll be our other side and I'll just go ahead and put it right on in like this and then I go ahead and put it in the bag and we, like this is so simple you don't have to really do anything because the it'll the juices will do pretty much everything for you. Now, it, since it's turned over in the bag, I go ahead and get my hands washed, and then I'll put some more brown sugar and salt on it, and just do the represses the whole time. All right, so I did both sides. Um, it's in there, and what I would do here is I usually go ahead and put the the bag in kind of sideways because what I've had in the past for it leaked out into the bottom of the tray that I put it in so in the bottom of the, the overflow fridge so I want to double I double bag it but I always put the date on because sometimes we get carried away and we forget okay what day was it we did it was it Saturday was it Friday so um and then I just every day I flip it and for six days, and on the sixth day, which you'll have to come back and just watch us smoke it. Well, guys, there's the salmon. And um, I just wanted to tell you guys how much I appreciate you and how much I really enjoy all your comments. And I've been enjoying all the stories. I love it. And thanks for watching. <laughs>